So this is part two of my audio spectrum analyzer project and in this part I will be talking about designing the circuit board for the project. If you missed part one uh, I talked about the parts I used to create the spectrum analyzer, um, why I chose those parts, and I talked about a little bit of the final design but if you're interested in the design, just keep watching this because that's what this is about. So, uh, for this video, it's mainly going to be focusing on Eagle because when designing boards, uh, I use Eagle. And the main issue with this part was figuring out how to fit everything on a circuit board. Uh, the final decision was that we couldn't fit everything on a single circuit board, so we used three. Uh, I will show you that now. So this is Eagle. If you haven't used this, uh, it's okay. This is just the schematic view. So here is layer one. So what we did was I took, I ended up using three, three by four boards and going to stack them on top of each other like uh, using an Arduino shield. So that way we can keep a 3x4 board but sort of minimize the jumper wires because the amount of traces uh, that's necessary are way too many for one board. So here's the schematic for the top board where as you can see there's the seven columns of LEDs and there's uh, they're 20 LEDs tall. Uh, only the anode side of the LEDs are wired. So you can see here. And the anode side goes, all of each column is connected. So all the anodes are connected together. And they go into the this seven uh, male pin header. So because if you watch my last video, the 4017 decides which column to give power to. Uh, each column needs its own separate power source, which is why they're going into uh, a different pin on the pin header. The cathode side is left unwired because the middle board only supplies ground. That's its entire purpose, is to supply ground to these LEDs. So here is the board view. When I make my circuit board, this is what you're going to see. There's the seven columns of the LEDs, and only their anode side is wired, and they each get their own power. So that is the top, top board. Um, board two, as you can see, there's eight columns of male pin headers, uh, seven columns for the LEDs, and the eighth column over here is getting the ground signal from the LM3519s uh, from the bottom board. So these take the signal from the bottom board and it gives, uh, so pin 10 would give that signal to all pin 10s on the LEDs. Uh, this whole system on how it's going to run is explained in my first video. So again, if you want to see that, click uh, in the corner and it'll take you to the first part. This is just how I laid out my circuit board. So these, you can see these seven pin headers, if you remember them from the top board, they're still here because they're getting power all the way from the bottom board from the 4017 counter. So to get it from the bottom to the top, you obviously need something in the middle. So this is the middle. It's not connected to anything because it's just acting as sort of a pipeline to get the power signal from the bottom to the top. Uh, to make sure that these lined up after we printed them out and put them on our board, I went over here to the grid and I asked to display the grid so that I could see everything and so that I could make sure that the second board, these pin headers on the second board lined up with the pin headers on the first board because if they didn't, they wouldn't stack and the project just wouldn't work. 
So the most complex part of the circuit board is the bottom layer, which has all of the components. Uh, you can see that this is just the wiring. You can see we have the AT Tiny here, the MSG Q7, we have the audio jack, the DC jack, the two LM3914s. Sorry, I think I called them 15s earlier. They're LM3914s. This is the 4017 counter, and these are the seven transistors going into the uh, male pin headers. So this is what's giving power to everything. Now, if you look at the board view, this is crazy. This took me the longest to design, and it still uses jumper wires, but it uses far less than if we were to only make one board. So you can see we have the audio jack here, and then the signal is being jumped by jumper wire over to the MSG Q7. Uh, then the MSG Q7's clock pin is coming from the AT Tiny, as well as its reset pin of the AT Tiny is going to the MSG EQ7 as well. So then it goes into the 4017 counter, and there's a few jumper wires because the 4017's counter pins aren't in order, so you have to jump a few of them because they don't directly line up. Here are my LM3914s. Uh, you can see how they're going right into the pin headers. So that's the ground signal that's going to go up to the middle board and then over to all of them, and then the top board is going to get the ground. This is the DC jack, and the this is the seven pin headers. So this is power, and that goes all the way up to the top as well. So pictures of the Eagle file will be on my blog. Uh, I'll probably have downloads as well. And also, this is these are the two boards that I have right now. The top layer of the board is still being made, so I don't have a picture of that. But this is how the bottom board turned out, and then this is the middle board. Uh, these are 3 by 4 inch copper pieces, and then all the parts should fit on there. So next week uh, will be the final product. Hopefully it'll all be working. Uh, the one thing that I changed, which I forgot to mention, was that I added the AT Tiny, so I no longer need the Arduino to run my circuit. And if you want to see the parts that I used, go to my blog. If you want to download the Eagle Sketches, go to my blog. If you want to see the pictures, it's all on my blog. And uh, this was just about the Eagle Files. Um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys next week with the final project. Thanks.